Hi everyone, it's Laurel here with a super fun video, special video. I'm part of a blog hop celebrating 100 videos and 2,500 subscribers from Art from the Heart with Emily. And me, along with some other bloggers, have created some super fun videos on the hop. You should have hopped over by way of Nina Yang, and then you'll be hopping over by way of Laura Sturks at the end of this video. And all this information is below in my YouTube description. And this is the card I'm going to be making today. I wanted to keep it very clean and simple and create a fun little shaped card with some watercoloring features. And um, it's going to be really funny because that little toaster is going to give me some trouble when I go to watercolor it. But you'll see it all in the video. So anyway, I'm using some stitch circles from Lawn Fawn. This is the large and the small set I've combined into one. And you see that little black magnetic sheet? That is actually a product by Ellen Hudson. I bought a whole bunch of those and I have taped those all the way down to the packaging. And that's how I store all of my die cuts. And I love that. It's a very inexpensive uh, product and that keeps all my dies and stuff from falling towards the bottom of my little Avery L pocket so I just love that so I've gone ahead and die cut two of the larger ones which is going to be making my card shape and then I've got this smaller circle panel which is going to be the panel I'm going to put on top of the card so this is a stamp set called Love and Breakfast from Lawn Fawn. It's from one of their earlier releases and I absolutely love it. It's full of such cute in images and sentiments that you can use year round. Uh, you can also use it for Valentine's Day that's coming up if you have it as well. It's just so much fun. I've gone ahead and pulled out my Misty real quick to go ahead and stamp the toaster and the little toast. I like using the Misty because I can put the, the stamp exactly where I want it. I can take that little hinged door on the right hand side close it and it's going to pick up my stamped image and then I can just stamp it. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. I use this also for double stamping. This is also good if I don't do a good job inking up my image. I only partially ink it. Uh, if you have clear stamps you can line it up. Uh, look over the clear stamp, line it up and press down. But I've messed up so many stamps that way by trying to rush and lining it up and, and uh, not stamping right over the top and just messing it up. So this definitely saves uh, me some time when it comes to that. So now I've gone ahead and uh, stamped the toast. Now I'm, I'm sta I've stamped the toaster. Now I'm going to stamp the little toast. I'm trying to figure out how I want it to be popping up out of the toaster there. So again, I've got that lined up where I want it. I just press down the little hinge door, pick it up, ink up my image, and then stamp. It's just that easy. So I am really enjoying this product. So now that I've got my images stamped where I want them to be, uh, I did want to note that I did stamp these images with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. The reason I did that is because it's a pigment ink and pigment inks stay wet longer, so I'm able to quickly heat emboss uh, these images. So that's just my little tub of clear embossing powder. I always, most of the time, I always uh, heat, and heat set my images for two reasons when I do watercoloring. One, it keeps the images, uh, the outlines of them nice and black and crisp. Sometimes when you add color or markers, it kind of softens the outlines of the images, and I didn't want that. And two, the heat embossed almost acts as a barrier when you're doing some watercoloring. This is a product that I learned about in one of the online card classes. It's called Liquid Frisket. It's a liquid mask, basically. So I've got a paintbrush dedicated just to this particular product because uh, it does kind of leave your paintbrush a little well, a little warped even though you clean it. So I've just grabbed one of these really cheap ones from my son's stash and uh, this is my liquid frisket brush. And I am painting on this liquid mask. If you don't have this, you can certainly use a paper mask. Just stamp your image on some masking paper, a sticky note, and stamp it and uh, place it down. I'm not using paper because I'm going to do watercoloring, and I don't want that watercoloring to seep under the paper. You can also use rubber cement, as Jennifer McGuire has mentioned in one of her videos. The only negative about this particular product is it stinks. It smells like rotten eggs almost. So when I use this, I just breathe through my mouth. <laughs> it might not bother y'all as much as it bothers me. So as I'm allowing that to dry, I thought I'd go ahead and stamp the sentiment. One of the great things about clear stamps is that you can, uh, you can kind of use them how you want them. I want to arch my sentiment. So I'm going to mount it on my block at an arched angle. So that way my little popping up to say, which is what that sentiment says, is arched up at the top of the die cut or of, of the image here. And I just think that's so cute and it's so much fun to just arch your angles. You can put them at a diagonal. I just like that you're able to kind of bend those clear stamps and mount them on your acrylic block in unique ways. So I've gone ahead and stamped up popping to say. And then I'm trying to decide. There's a lot of different sentiments in the stamp set. I love when you have one stamp set that you can use over and over again without having to reach to other stamp sets to grab sentiments to go with it. 
I like very diverse stamp sets, and this is one of them. But I decided to go with the XOXO image. I say that to my uh, son all the time when I write. I leave little notes, and I say that in my emails and stuff like that, so I thought that was appropriate. So again, I've gone ahead and stamped that with that same pigment ink, so I'm going to heat set that with some clear embossing powder, too. And now it's time to go ahead and add some water coloring. This is a jar of just regular old-fashioned H2O, good old water. So I've, got, I've grabbed a brush and I'm applying a wash of water down uh, on my base there and then I'm going to go ahead and add that base color. Now I can go over that liquid frisket, I don't have to worry about it because that liquid frisket is now dry. You can see it's almost like a cream color that lets you know it's dry and anything that touches that, it's going to resist it. So I've grabbed some, uh, some this is my favorite uh, watercolor set, this is the Gonzai watercolors. And I went ahead and put some down on my craft sheet and I watered it down some more because I didn't want it to be a super bright pink. So when, the more water you add, the, the less intense the color is going to be. Alright, so that is done and now it's time to kind of reveal the images underneath that liquid frisket there. So you know that the liquid frisket is dry when it's kind of off-white. Can you see how it's, it's almost turned like an off-white cream color? So that lets you know it's dry, so you're able to go on with your project. And to peel it off, you're just simply kind of pushing it away with your fingers. It's just, it's really quite easy. So I like that product, and I think that if I had used a paper mask, some of this watercolor would have seeped underneath. So this or rubber cement would probably be uh, a good avenue for you to take. Now, in hindsight, I could have left these images right here not colored because I think it's really uh, eye-catching, and the recipient would have been kind of curious how in the world you got all that watercolor there on the background without getting any on the images. So I think that's really pretty. So I'll have to make note that the next time I do a watercolor project to leave the focal images not colored because I, I just think that's eye-catching. But that's not what I do here. <laughs> So to start with, I'm grabbing a Distress Marker in Pumice Stone. Now before we move forward, I do want to say that I bought the entire set of Distress Markers when they first were released, so that was several years ago, at least two years ago, probably more. And uh, there, some of them are dried out. You know, over time, the markers are just going to dry out. So I'm going to end up switching my watercolors here in just a minute, but you'll see as I start scribbling it down that not a lot of colors coming out. I have the Distress Inks in the minis, and I could have used that, but... That's not what I do. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of the pumice stone down. I'm realizing I'm not going to be able to get the color effect that I want because the marker is just so dry. So I'm going to pull out my Gonzai watercolors again here in just a minute and kind of work on that toaster some more and mess it up. Oh, gosh, y'all see what I mean in just a minute. So I went in and added a little bit of water down black there and I decided to give my toaster a break. So I'm going to focus on the, the bread and I decided to make it a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which is hilarious because you wouldn't have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich popping up out of your toaster because that would be gross and ruin your toaster. But whatever, it's still cute, isn't it? Here's where I mess it up. OMG, will you look what I did? I put, obviously, way too much black. So I am flipping out right now. You can see my face on camera. But I'm, I'm flipping out, so I'm going in with white. I'm trying to cover it up with white, but then that just looks like mud. So I'm going in with a little more water down why I am just doing whatever I can to desperately try to fix this image because I don't want to have to redo this card panel and this little toaster is so cute but I cannot believe I had this much trouble watercoloring it this is when I should have just stepped away but I decided to add this pool color because everything looks good with pool in my opinion and I think that saved this little toaster I'm a big fan of this pool color my daughter's room is in this color I just love it so uh, I went with that and I think that saved my my little toaster here. So keep a keep a dry rag kind of nearby so when you're doing some water coloring if you make a little boo-boo you can get it up real quick. So since I my toaster went a little bit heavier than I thought I just added a little bit more color to that background that pink color. Now this is a little doohickey thing I've seen several different crafters use for their glue because it has a fine precision tip. However I put a bunch of multi matte medium in it and that's that's most of the glue that I use and I don't like this bottle for that, so I'm not even going to tell you what it is. It's not going to be listed in my supplies because the glue that I put in it is so thick, it is so hard to squeeze out that end. I am like squeezing and squeezing and squeezing just to get that glue out. So this might be a great uh, precision bottle for glossy accents or something that's maybe a little bit thinner than the multimedium, but I am not a fan of using it for multimedium. Just so you know, there's a lot of crafters that I see that use it without any problems, but for me, it's not my thing. <laughs> so I'll end up emptying that out and filling that up with something else because it is a good product, 
just for me, not for the multi matte medium. So now I'm putting on these fun little googly eyes by Pretty Pink Posh. These are super tiny. I've never seen googly eyes this tiny before. So I got little dabs of that multi matte medium and I'm putting the little googly eyes over the top there and it's just so fun to toast with the googly eyes. It's adorable. So now I've got this little background panel here. This is the base of our card. I needed to add some color to it so I'm going to add some pool. Just a real messy wash. I put the water down first and then I'm just dabbing on some of the, the pool color. The water basically does all the blending for me. I don't need to worry about the inside because that's going to be covered up with that, uh, I'm going to call it my toaster panel because me and that toaster have now bonded over severe water coloring. <laughs> so since I did so much watercoloring, not even the heat embossed image could save that. So I've got my Copic Multiliner here, and I'm just going in, kind of going over the eyes, the smiley face, and some of the outlines of the toaster that kind of got washed away with all that watercolor. I think that's a point three Copic Multiliner. And so now my little panel is done. I love shaking the googly eyes. It's just so much fun. But my toaster, you know... It wasn't worked over enough, so I'm going to work over it a little bit more, and I'm adding some Wink of Stella in clear. I did what Jennifer suggested because my marker was completely dry, so I went in and added some water, and this sucker is brought back to life ten times over. It's got a lot of glitter left in there when it dries out, so definitely uh, take her up on her recommendation and just add in a little bit of water and shake it up, and you've got a whole new Wink of Stella glitter pen. So now my toaster is all colored and sparkly and shiny and ready to go, so it's time to kind of mount everything down. So this is a piece of fun foam that I cut um, down. It's a crappy cut of a circle, but it's not going to be matter. It's not going to matter. It's behind that little uh, watercolor toaster panel there. And because I put so much water on that the panel, the toaster panel, it warped a little bit. So I'm putting this fun foam down behind there rather than a bunch of uh, foam dots or little pieces of double-sided tape just to make it more even and secure. This is another idea I got from Jennifer. So now that that's secure, I'm going to go ahead and add glue on the other side of that, and then I'm going to secure that down to my card panel here. This is the front of the card. So if you'll remember, I cut that big circle twice. That other circle up there at the top is going to be the base of my card. So all I did was score it at the top, maybe half inch down the way, adding a little bit of adhesive there to the top, and then I will line that up and press those two circles together, and then I've got my card shape there. And that score line is going to help it you know, bend in the back like cards do. And then this is it. This is the card. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry it took so long to color that toaster. I don't, I don't know. It is what it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. The next person on your hop is Laura Sturks. Her uh, link to her YouTube video is down below in my YouTube description, as well as the supplies used in today's uh, card. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.